This is Waba's Words of Wisdom, an anonymous live advice show where people can submit their stories, their topics that they wish to get advice on. Uh, we have a few topics to talk about today. So think of this in kind of the realm of Mental Health Monday, where both myself and chat will give folks peer support and love. Obviously, with a giant grain of salt, there is a giant, uh, basically, a disclaimer that you, everyone has to agree to upon submitting a uh, request for a response. But yeah, uh, that's what this is. That's what the premise is. And the purpose is to hopefully help educate folks and help them along in their life journey. And hopefully, if you see your story, you can have your story featured here, obviously, anonymously. I'll leave a link in the description below, but you can also go on my Twitch and exclamation point advice form. You'll find a link to the Google Doc there as well. So that being said, we have seven responses to shift through. I think I've shifted through six of the seven so far. So we might have some spam. Um, and we have, we have a variety of ones. We have stories, but we also have just general topics. So here's our first general topic is dealing with parents who don't support your dreams. So the floor is open, but I'm going to start with this, which is that if you have parents who don't support your dreams, I don't think they're very good parents. Um, now that being said, it depends, right? You know, there's certainly a reasonable amount of like, you know, kind of like, you know, what is reasonable, what is a reasonable dream? And it's okay to like, you know, set expectations for yourself and, you know, stuff like that. So like, Understandably so, if a parent might at first just be like, hey, you know, maybe you should like think about the expectations you're setting for yourself. You know, is this a realistic, attainable goal? And if it is, you know, cool, awesome, go for it. Uh, but if it's not, you know, don't disappoint yourself if you can't obtain this goal, especially if you can't obtain this goal right away, right? And I think in general, it is a parent's, it should be a parent's prerogative to, um, you're right, I should put it right here and then hide it behind my head. It should be a parent's prerogative to guide their child the best way that they can and to try to help them on their journey um, and basically raise them in, a, in such a way so that they might succeed in whatever they plan to do and try to do in their life. Um, I think Matthew has said it best before um, that a parent should help raise a kid to be, you know, able to take on the world, no matter what's going on. What's your advice? Just eat them. Just eat them. Frankie's advice is to just eat them. Great advice, Frankie. That seems sound. Yes, eat your parents. Yeah. So if you have, de if you're dealing with parents who don't support your dreams, um, obviously it depends on the nature of your dreams. You know, are you being realistic with yourself? Are you making yourself smart goals? Uh, what's a smart goal? Smart goal is something that is, uh, time oriented. Oh God, what is this? I'm going to look, I'm going to look this up again because it's actually a really great term to, to think about. Goal, specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time bound. So smart goals are an acronym to think about as to how to make goals for yourself. So it stands for specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time bound. Defining these parameters as they pertain to your goals helps ensure that your objectives are obtainable within a certain time frame. So it's important to be realistic with yourself about what goals are achievable. Um, you know, so what does this mean? It means you set your specific goals. So I have a goal to do this X. I, I want to do X, right? Um, so it's okay. How do I achieve X? What are the steps needed to achieve X? And are they, is it a measurable thing? So do I need to have this many things? So, so for instance, someone came up with a goal. Someone will come up with a goal right now. Tell me, tell me your dreams. Chat, tell me your dreams right now. Let's go. Tell me your lifelong dream. What do you want to do in your life? We're going to make a smart goal. We're going to make an example because I think it's easier with an example. HR, a uh, human resources manager. I mean, no, it's for your music. I dreamed the other day that I slept at work and I missed all the training. Everyone was like, oh, it's fine. It's okay. And I cried. <laughs> I 
Not that kind of dream ribbon. <laughs> to become Waba's sugar daddy? Okay. Let's let's go with that one, because that's funny. <laughs> so, in order to become Waba's sugar daddy, there's there's gotta be a very specific goal. What needs to be accomplished? What needs to be accomplished? What needs to be accomplished is that you need to so that in order to become Waba's sugar daddy, you have to financially support Waba on 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 a regular basis, and and allow Waba to achieve their goals, whatever they may be, financial or otherwise. Who's responsible for this goal? You're responsible. You have to make sure that you have enough money saved up so that you can be a sugar daddy for Waba. This is such a weird example. Um, what steps need to be taken to achieve it? Probably more investing. Probably more investing and in making sure that you have like trillions of dollars and that like you know a few hundred here and there is like fucking peanuts to you it's measurable it needs to be measurable what are what are waba's needs if i'm going to be waba's sugar daddy what are waba's needs let's have a solid solid number in mind is it two thousand a month it just about is <laughs> you know whatever it is it has to be specific it has to be a specific measurable goal is it achievable? Is it real? Is it is it achievable? Achievable means am I work? If I'm working a part time job, at minimum wage, am I going to ach uh, be achievable to be able to pay for not only my own bills but also Waba's bills? Probably not. Probably not going to happen. But if you're the CEO of a multi billion dollar company, do I have the money and financial means to support someone else? Then yeah, probably. Then yeah, probably. So, specific goal, become Waba's sugar daddy, measurable, how much money does Waba need, achievable, do I have the money and capability to do this, is it relevant, why are you setting the goal that you're setting, why do I want to become Waba's sugar daddy, is it something that's going to bring me personal pleasure, personal, personal pain and pleasure, am I going to be, am I going to be feeling fulfilled if I'm able to financially support Waba, maybe. <laughs> and it has to be time bound. How long can I sustain this for? How long do I want to do this for? Do I want to do this for the rest of Waba's life? Good lord, you could. With enough resources, you could. But yeah, let's go with Ribbon School as well. Besides a dream job for my dream for my life is is entirely that I just want to live a happy, simple life, enjoy what I do, enjoy who I am around, and enjoy where I am. Right. And that's a very big picture goal, Ribbon. And that's generally like what a lot of people's goals are in life. So let's go with your specific goal uh, to become an advocate for LGBTQ people. So whatever that whatever that job position is, maybe we don't know what that is. But let's but let's try to break that down into something more specific. So what needs to be accomplished? What needs to be accomplished is that you have to put yourself out there into the world a bit, and you know find maybe maybe. Throw some lines out, think, you know, see about other people, other jobs that people might have that is something similar to what you're thinking of. You know, maybe you find something that's just like, ah, oh, yes, you can be an advocate, you can be a counselor for LGBTQ people, you know? If you can find teachers that might have connections, that's why I have this job now. Yeah. Yeah. Because from here, from, from your job currently, you actually, there is actually a lot of networking opportunities. Um, to see what other kind of positions are in the field of human services. So if anything, getting this job is a really amazing, great first step to achieving that goal, Ribbon, you know? Um, so, yeah, what needs to be accomplished? Who's responsible? What steps need to be taken to achieve it? Is it measurable? Now, the measurable part is going to be hard because it's going to be like, well, you measure it as part of like, you know, with the job, with a job that I get be specifically helping LGBTQ people yes or no, kind of a, you know, Boolean variable there. But you could also measure it in the way of like, well, I'm taking measured steps to find that job and get there. Achievable. Yes. So this is achievable. Is it realistic? It absolutely is realistic to say like, yeah, I could go from one job to another, work my way up the ladder and, and find, you know, the best human services job that makes me feel the most fulfilled. Again, relevant it why are you setting this goal because you want to feel fulfilled you want to help other lgbtq people um in their in their life and i think that's a really amazing thing and that's something that's very important to you it's important to me too um time bound you know 
how soon do you want to achieve this? How soon can you realistically achieve this? You know, maybe you have to spend a few months in a job before you're able to like move up kind of thing. So that's what SMART goals is. So the reason I was talking about SMART goals is dealing with parents who don't support your dreams. So make sure your dreams are realistic, basically is what I'm saying, A of all. B of all, dealing with parents. Now this is something that I've talked about before um, with within regards to my own experiences with being raised. I was in a I was in a hoarder household with a narcissistic mother and an enabling father um who I felt was very absent in my life a lot of times. Um and unfortunately in some ways, you know, I am I I do admit that I have a a bit of financial privilege from my initial upbringing, you know, we are probably I think you would say as like uh, upper middle class kind of family, but I felt poor because I never really had money. I was just kind of under the financial support of my parents, but at the same time, I didn't really, I, I got a little bit of an allowance. I never really had much money and anything I wanted to do was financially backed by my mom or financially decided by my mom, even though my dad was the breadwinner of the family. Um, and she also held me by those financial purse strings and held over my head anytime something cost some amount of money. Um, so money was always, the transactional money was just always just like hung over my head as something that I need to value so highly. Uh, because if I didn't basically beg for it, then I wasn't going to get it at all. Um, which sucks. And she's hung me funking out of Drexel over my head for many years and I... You know, I understand that it was a big financial commitment. Um, but also, like, it's really shitty of her to hung that over my head for so many years. Just emotionally shitty. It's just like, listen, I didn't ask you to pay for Drexel. I said I would get loans. And she's like, no, no, I'm going to pay. I'm like, okay. And then she would use that leverage against me. Um, so dealing with parents who don't support your dreams. A lot of times... The best way to some of the best steps that you can take to escape that kind of a situation is to try to become financially independent. And maybe you can't work your dream job right away. Maybe you can't work your dream job right away, but you can do other things. You can get yourself into other positions where you are earning money. Maybe you don't like the work that much, but you are earning money and you can save up some money and become more financially independent. Because the more financially independent that you are, the less dependent you are on your parents' finances. Now, obviously, not all transactions with your parents should be financial anyway. You know, there's obviously uh, an emotional attachment there to our parents. Now, obviously, me, myself, I have expressed many times over that I'm not too emotionally attached to my parents much just of the nature of my upbringing i just i i do not feel like i can spend another night feeling anxious and crying about my mother's inability to understand me and just fucking listen and not be a narcissist for 0. 0.2 seconds um and i talk to my dad on the occasion um and i think our relationship is a little bit better nowadays but Honestly, I'm not too attached to him either. Like, I am, but I'm not. Like, I, I really have detached myself. But other people aren't. Other people are very attached to their parents. You know, they raised you. They they took care of you. You know, you, f you might feel very indebted to them in a way. And very just, you know, indebted in an emotional way. Like, very emotionally tied to them and tied to other people. And I, I, I totally get that because I'm very emotionally tied to Frankie, for instance, right? You know, I love Frankie with my whole heart and being. And, you know, if if anything were to sully that relationship, I would certainly, you know, do everything in my power to to try to fix it and to try to mend it. So very often we find ourselves um, playing the child, say, so to speak. We kind of regress a little bit and we, we kind of act out sometimes when it comes to our parents not giving us the things that we want but the in this instant the thing that we want is that emotional um confirmation 
that we are doing a good job. You kind of want to get that, you know, am I am I a good am I a good son? Am I a good daughter? Am I a good child to you? You know, you you really kind of do want and you chase after that approval is what it is, you know. Um and, you know, it's really really hard to continue to chase that approval and, and the fact that that it, that it's a chase for approval kind of might speak very poorly about the initial upbringing like you know definitely i think i think there's universal feelings of seeking approval from parents but if your parents have set in place this thing where you feel the need to have to get their approval about what you do in life like obviously it's nice to feel that your parents approve of your life but also at the same time, isn't it kind of fucking weird that we're so thirsty for our parents' approval? Like, I think that's emotionally weird. I think that's a little emotionally abusive in my honest opinion. I mean, I also call into question the entire, like, I mean, it's power dynamics basically at play. Um, but yeah, I'm very disconnected, so I am very much see it in these very, like, strict ways. So excuse my french when i say i think it's fucking weird um like obviously your parents have modem of control over you to make sure that you keep safe and that you're raised well but they shouldn't hold that over you you know what i mean like they should have your parents should have a uh unwavering and stable love for you un 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 what is the word for this um the word for this would be you know, they have a uh, n unconditional love for you, right? Much like you love your pet. You love your pet unconditionally. I think your parents should love you unconditionally. Now, obviously, your parents shouldn't see you as their pet, although some parents do. Um, <laughs> but yeah, you know, your parents should have unconditional love for you. Um, now, some parents also put on top of that conditional support and i think that's the shitty part is like you know it's like fine you know parents can make you know appropriate boundaries and steps to say like hey you want this financial support i need you to have a solid plan that seems a bit reasonable to me what seems unreasonable is when a parent is just like no this is stupid fuck you go away even if you have a plan they're like no we're not going to support you so when dealing with that kind of situation you're gonna find yourself in this emotional kind of black hole of wanting to seek their approval and yet also wanting to kind of prove to yourself that you don't need that approval, and yet you do. Um, so you might seek it out in different ways. You might seek attention in other aspects of your life or other aspects of other people's lives to find approval from through them, through friends, through teachers, through other things. And then when you get that approval from a friend or a teacher and the teacher's like, yeah, you did really great on this, this, this thing. Like, oh, that's awesome. Like, I think this is a great plan. Coworkers, bosses, managers, you know, oh, that's awesome. Like, I'm excited for you. And then you present it to your parents and your parents are just like, eh, eh, okay, okay. Like that hurts. That 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 hurts so large. That hurts a lot. And I'm not saying that 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 that's necessarily manipulative of your parents. Maybe not intentionally manipulative, but it hurts. And then it's like, how do you go from there? You know, how, how do you, how do you conceivably try to seek approval from there? Because the natural instinct is, oh, well, I guess I'm not good enough. I guess I just need to try harder, even though you tried your hardest. And, and, and it becomes this upward impossible battle where you continually try harder and harder and harder and you can never win because if a parent is being manipulative or a parent is being dismissive, you know, that's not gonna feel good ever. 
And then you're never going to get that approval because they're just going to be like, oh, well, you could have done this better. Oh, I guess that's pretty good. But, you know, I would have done this. Or you should really do that. And to those parents, fuck you. You're fucking up your kid. Don't do that. <sighs> like, I think it's I think it's reasonable as a parent to want your kid to want to achieve more. But you should also be proud of what they are producing right now, say so to speak. Um, because we, we have ingrained in us this culture of, oh, you have to be productive. You have to be, you have to be industrious. You have to get ahead in life and you have to want to achieve. But not everyone wants to achieve and that's okay. Some people are okay and perfectly content working at, at this level. You know what I mean? That doesn't make them lesser than. That doesn't make them superior or unsuperior. Just because someone works up here and someone works here, both these jobs are important in different ways. Like the CEO to the janitor. They're both important in different ways. They're very critical to the working of the whole entire business. Which is why I always try to sell people, like, respect anyone at any position. Meet people where they're at. You know? If that's important to them and that's what they hope to achieve and they wish to do that, let them. You know? It's good to want your kid to achieve. It's good to want other people to achieve their best self. But maybe their best self is at that lower level and that's, there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, society kind of requires people to be relatively content and okay with working lower level jobs, which is unfortunate that we pay lower level jobs much lower wages when they do something that is that is also important to the operation. I understand that. I understand that from a business perspective, of course. You pay more you pay more for a more technically challenging job, sure. But from a respect way, it should be equal. The pet thing makes a lot of sense. I never thought about it that way. I never would have stopped loving my pet because they made a mistake to love. They made. Exactly. Exactly. Your pet might make mistakes. Your pet might be a little stupid. And maybe you tell your pet that they're stupid, but you wouldn't tell another human that they're stupid or that they're less they're worth less than because of a mistake that they made. <laughs> but yeah, so when dealing with parents who don't support your dreams. How, how do we deal with that? How do we deal with that? There's a lot of ways. There's a lot of ways to deal with that. I think, I think understanding the problem is step one, and that's what we just talked about. But step two is kind of developing coping strategies for yourself. So step one is defining the problem and understanding why we feel like we need that approval from our parents. Step two is coping mechanisms, right? So how do we cope when, when parents don't support your dreams? You know, if, with parents who don't support our dreams. Uh, I think we cope by financial independence. I think we cope by uh, trying to, you know, here's the thing. It, it really depends on the level of how much your parents are How do I say this? It depends on the level of how much conversation your parents are willing to engage with you. You know what I mean? Um, if your parents are willing to talk with you about, you know, what their concerns are and they're coming at you from a point of respect or a point of like that they care about you. I mean, obviously, you know, take that with a grain of salt as well, because parents certainly sometimes say really shitty things and then just be like, oh, well, it's because I care about you. Which I think is a piece of shit, which I think is bullshit. But, you know, carrying on without my bias. Um, so, yeah, if you can have a conversation with them about, you know, well, why don't you support my dreams? You know, what, what, what are your concerns? You know, and trying to address those concerns with your parents and talk with them about, you know, 
what your goals are and what the potentials of those goals are and obviously what are the drawbacks and negatives and you know would you be realistic with them um if that's still if they aren't willing to have it it depends if they're willing to have a conversation you're going to feel a little bit better but if they aren't willing to have a conversation and it's just kind of like it's a it's a dead-end conversation where they constantly are just like whatever you should give up you know i don't i don't think it's worth your it's worth your tears to argue with them at that point as much as you want to as much as you want to seek approval and that's why i say step one is very important to realize like where is this coming from why am i wanting to seek their approval so much is it because they they set up this situation of like a negative emotional sinkhole of that like no matter how much i do it's never going to be enough for them and can you come to terms can you come to terms uh for to can you come to terms with the with a fact that they might never support you it's an awful thing to try to come to terms with but i think it's really important to set your expectations of your parents to be realistic as well if your parents aren't going to support you then i wouldn't want to continue emotionally investing myself into them say so to speak emotionally investing myself at least into that conversation specifically and that's a very hard thing to separate out for for people who are very attached to their parents and are very enmeshed with their parents you know because that's your parents right that's just what you say they're your parents well let's examine it examine the relationship examine the enmeshness examine is this healthy if this was your friend would you remain friends with them i don't think you would and I'm not saying that your parents need to be your friends, like your parents should be your parent and should help guide you on your path throughout life and should be there to support you. But that's the thing, they should be there to support you. Even though they might not agree or understand with what you're doing, they should still generally try to support you and try to understand you and be loving and be unconditionally loving. And if they aren't, then I think you should give up on any idea that your parents, you know, are going to care about that basically like just just give that up in your mind but that doesn't mean give up on your dreams i just mean give up emotionally to thinking that your parents are going to give a shit about your dreams because if they're not going to give a shit then they're not going to give a shit and if they're not willing to have a conversation then they're not willing to have a conversation and it fucking sucks but sometimes you have to admit that to yourself in order to move forward with pursuing your dreams so my personal take on how to cope is emotionally distance yourself. And maybe that's a bad coping mechanism, but the alternative is continually hurting yourself by expecting your parents to support you when they just don't and they don't wish. And if they don't think about this, you're, if you're speaking to a stranger about, about some other issue that you're very passionate about, because you're certainly passionate about your dreams, are you going to... Are you going to, you know, yell until your face is blue at this random stranger who, you know, is just like, well, I'm not willing to listen and I'm not willing to learn and I'm not willing to to at all understand your point of view. So whatever. I think your dreams are stupid. And I'm not saying your parents should be like a stranger to you, but it's a similar situation where it's just like you're, you're, you're talking to a wall. You're talking to someone who's not even willing to engage the conversation properly. So why should you emotionally invest yourself further into it? Why are you seeking that approval? I just went off there. Uh, dealing with parents who don't support your dreams. So that's kind of my general takes, uh, my own general personal bias takes on this topic and I think it's a really important topic because there's a lot of people out there um, who have parents who don't support their dreams and I think that's tragic I think it's tragic um, I think it's important to understand where the parents are coming from uh, but it's also important to see if your parents are even willing to have a conversation about it and if they're not willing to have a conversation then you should throw away any pretense that you think that they'll ever be willing to have a conversation and maybe they will be willing in the future to have a conversation, but you know, I, I think an inconsistency, inconsistency is not something that you should 
rely on, say so to speak, emotional inconsistency. You know, maybe years in the future, sure. But if you just get the same response again and again, then you probably shouldn't bet on your parents wanting to understand or seeking to understand. So I think just to finish what I was saying, I guess, is just to say, you know, once you become financially independent and you emotionally independent, make yourself independent as well, and you're not reliant on their approval, I think that's when you can feel more free to kind of try things, try new things and get yourself out there, you know, try your damnedest in spite of not having support from your parents. Like, yeah, that hurts, but what's going to hurt more is if you don't even pursue them in the first place. Hi, Post Waba here. Um, I hope you enjoyed that episode of Words of Wisdom. This is the first one. I have about nine more that I have to edit through here. Sorry it's taken so long. We did our birthday subathon on April 29th, and I was doing that on the 30th, so this is some backlog here. Um, anyway, yeah, feel free to submit your story below. Uh, we haven't done any more since. We haven't gotten many stories, but yeah, feel free to submit your story. Feel free to submit a topic in the uh, Google form below. All right, thanks. Bye-bye.